Awesome, thank you guys. I think I was actually asked to give a picture from when I was 14 and the only one I could find was from soccer because I'm pretty sure that was around the time we converted to digital cameras. I have no idea what happened to all of those pictures. <laughs> you guys don't have this problem. <laughs> So, uh, I'm very happy to be here today. I'm very excited to be able to do this version of Economics for Success. You guys all had the, uh, the in-class version, which is a little different because this time you get to pull your phones out again for the whole thing. So, get your phones ready. We're gonna do some more polling. And I believe the first question you guys actually already heard the answer to. <laughs> I think Neil gave it to you. So, question number one, true or false? BC technology sector employees earn 25% more than BC's average wage. It's a bit of a trick question. Because the answer is false. Because... <laughs> Cheaters! <laughs> Uh, and so that's because BC tech sector workers actually earn 85% more than BC's average wage, which is pretty crazy. So on to question two, true or false? Over the past five years, salaries for intermediate tech professionals in BC grew at a slower rate than overall wages in the province. And this should be pretty obvious. For those of you answering, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so the answer is false, because salaries for intermediate tech professionals in BC grew at an average rate of 7.8%. And this increase was higher than the overall uh, average annual salary increase in BC, which was just 4%. And so this totally demonstrates that the technology companies are growing, uh, and they're wanting to keep their employees happy and engaged. And to give you a better idea of what this looks like in BC, tech jobs with the highest salary increases include sales managers, which was up a whopping 27.5%, telecommunications managers, up 15.6%, software engineers, up 12%, information systems analysts, up 9.89%, and senior animators, up 7.6%. Now, I really don't know what half of these people do, but it sounds like they're making some pretty good money. <laughs> so on to question three. This one's uh, our first multiple choice question. How many of you are looking forward to moving out on your own? No, you guys are happy living at home? It's pretty easy and cushy, right? Yeah, okay, a few of you wanna go out. <laughs> so what is the bare minimum that you can expect to spend monthly on living expenses? Oh, did we lose our poll? Bare minimum, bare minimum that, we, uh, can, that you can expect to spend monthly on living expenses to live comfortably on your own in a city like Victoria. So we got $1,400 a month, $3,300 a month, or $2,100 a month. Wow, you guys are actually pretty smart. So the answer is C, it's $2,100 a month. This will cover your necessities like rent, utilities, public transportation, and groceries. Not a heck of a lot else. The rent is based on a modest studio apartment that's just outside of downtown, so you could probably expect to pay more if you are downtown. Um, and it also includes a, a modest budget for entertainment, health and wellness, uh, and insurance. Uh, this monthly income equates to about $26,000 annually before taxes. However, there's a caveat, and this one's important to me because as a financial planner, I'm always educating my clients on saving and spending and paying down debt, I should say. So that income does not include saving every month or paying down any of your existing debt like student loans. So if you intend to save approximately 20% of your income, you have to tack on another $5,200 to the calculations. So that means if you want to have a comfortable life in Victoria and actually be able to pay down your student debt and save for retirement or maybe some vacations, you need to be making at least $31,200 a year before taxes. So keep that in mind. That's another reason why a lot of people leave Victoria. <laughs> so getting into tech, you guys are set. Because if we move on to question number four, a junior software developer with two to four years of experience earned an average annual salary of we got 54,000, 60, 66,000 is looking like it's leading right now, but there's the other option of 75,400. The answer is actually C. 
$75,400 a year, yeah. Yeah, you can't change after you hear the answer. <laughs> but clearly, a junior software developer is going to enjoy her lifestyle in Victoria and have money left over each month to save, invest, and maybe enjoy going on some vacations or going to dinners out with their friends. So question number five. Let's take it up a notch. A senior software developer with four or more years of experience earned an average annual salary of? Now everyone's just picking the, lar the highest one. <laughs> And you would be correct if you're choosing A, <laughs> 93,900 a year. So that same junior software developer only has to work a few more years, and then now she's earning almost 25% more money. That's insane. So now she's able to start saving to buy her own condo, she doesn't have to rent forever, and she can go on a few vacations. So what if you're more of an artist or creative type? Anybody here who likes art more than everything else? Yeah, I see a few of you guys. So that's fine. You don't like math, that's cool. What about getting into the film or the video game industry? Have any of you guys thought of that? Yeah, there we go, perfect. So what do they earn? Let's find out. Specialist lighting artists and visual effects artists earned an average annual salary of? Okay. That's pretty close, everybody's getting, oh, now everyone's, oh yeah, you guys are, you guys are close, you're being conservative. So the answer is B, 105,000 a year. Yeah, crazy, right? <laughs> so how cool would it be to be designing special effects in the movie industry? Like, you know, Sony Imageworks and, and what they do for things like Guardians of the Galaxy and Spider-Man. Those guys are earning over six figures a year. That's pretty cool for an artist. Most people, when they think of an artist, they think of somebody struggling and they're not doing much. But when you get into the tech industry, you can really take that a, a long ways. So on to question number seven. If you're into visual art or animation, there's a major opportunity for you as well. Senior animators earned an average annual salary of, and now everyone's just picking the highest number again. But in this case, the answer is B. Yeah, $93,000 a year. So let's look at what if you didn't want to get into the technology per se, but you wanted to add technology-related skills to the fields that you're interested in. This is a big one for me, because even though I work for RBC, it's a bank, I don't really think of it as being in the tech industry, but we're using a lot more technology these days, and I need to know how to use that technology, and I need to know how to teach my clients how to use that technology. And so we can turn it over to some other careers like journalism and communications. Anybody here have any interest in journalism, communications, that kind of stuff, English language, yeah? So you could become a copywriter for a technology company in charge of creating the promotional content for their products. And if you're also able to write the user manual for the products by having the technical knowledge, you can also become their technical writer. So they're two similar jobs, right? But let's compare the pay. A general copywriter makes an average annualized salary of $46,358. How much do you guys think a copywriter with the technical writing skills, which are the skills to understand and translate that technical terminology, makes in comparison? Now, you guys are starting to catch on a little bit, aren't you? <laughs> so the answer is C. It's, it's actually copywriters with technical writing skills can expect an 11% increase in salary. And if they have the social media management skills, they can expect a 9% increase in salary, while having the tech-related skills in addition will induce a 20% jump in wage. Crazy knowing how to use tech and knowing how it fits into our lives. So question number nine, what if you're really into problem solving and the numbers behind a business and you've been curious about a career as an accountant? Anybody here ever thought of a career as an accountant? A couple of you? Yeah, it's not really a very exciting career. Most people don't really think, yeah, I'm gonna go become an accountant. Uh, one of my first jobs was at uh, Red Barn Market. I was in the produce department and my, the produce manager 
always told me, you need to go and become an accountant. You're going to make lots of money. And I was like, yeah, that doesn't really sound like me. But you, if you are interested in that kind of stuff, you could become an accountant for a tech company, because tech companies need accountants. So what do you think the median salary is for someone with their CPA designation working at a tech company? I think most of you have your answers in now while I was talking. So the, the answer is actually A, 120,000. So now who's thinking about becoming an accountant? Anybody else? <laughs> and we'll move on to the final question. If you are interested in art and you know how to create things that people like to look at, you might want to become a graphic designer. Anybody here have ideas of becoming a graphic designer? Yeah? I did a graphic design course in school, found out I was not quite the creative type. So if you upgrade your skill set for the tech field, that would mean you could become a user interface designer. And user interface designers are responsible for the feel of a website and creating a positive experience for the user in terms of making it clear, efficient, and attractive. You, you know, if you go to a website and you don't really like how it looks, you don't like how it feels, you don't really tend to vi revisit it again, do you? So this is often a great tech career choice for artists and graphic designers. And a graphic designer makes an average annual salary of $41,445. How much do you think a user interface designer earns in comparison? And again, this is kind of a trick question, because the answer is actually B on this one. User interface designers make almost $10,000 more than a general graphic designer. However, user experience designers, which involves understanding the user experience uh, and the user needs in apps and new technologies, they make $59,479 a year, which is a step up from those user interface designers. So wonderful job, guys. You can put your phones down for now. Thank you very much. That quiz is over. I really appreciate your participation. Show of hands, did you learn something new today? Yeah, yeah. I definitely learned something new today. I learned I probably should have gone for a career in tech. Would have been making a little more than I am now. However, I get the next best thing. I get to help all of those people manage their money and achieve their financial dreams and their retirements and whatnot. So I guess it's OK. But uh, thank you guys very much for your participation. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. All right. Thank you, Dale.